Good morning and welcome to the Daily Share where we pray the word of God and bring it to life in our lives. Proverbs 28 verse 13, whoever conceals their sins does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. New Living Translation, people who conceal their sins will not prosper, but if they confess and turn from them, they will receive mercy. English Standard Version, whoever conceals his transgressions will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. So we are talking about the power behind confessed sin. And yes, I realize that I've been pretty much in the last two or three shares, been pretty much talking about the same thing. And clearly God is impressing on me hard this topic. And everywhere I go, I literally come, might find myself coming across uh, this idea of confessing sin or oh, just, you know, it, it, when you're outside of the of the sort of the, the study of the Bible, it, most people will sort of look at it as just taking responsibility for your actions and admitting when you've done wrong, basically, right? And I just wanted to sort of go over super quickly um, uh, just some of the the benefits of um, just basically just admitting your sin to God or confessing your sin to God. I'm going to look at seven. I have seven points I've written down here. So I'm just going to give you um, seven, you know, benefits to um, or, or seven benefits or advantages of confessing sin before God, right? The first one is your enemy has nothing to hold over your head. Just think of even as not as people, right? When someone knows something about you, something you've done wrong, um, and the, uh, the, 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 you know, and you're trying to keep it secret, but they know about it. Do you know how much power that person has over you? That's how some people basically, um, you know, basically blackmail other people because they, they have information on them. And they make you feel more guilty about it until the day you just come out and say, Do you know what, I'm just going to come out and, and confess this. I'm just going to come out and let the world know about this, right? Then that person has nothing on you literally and, and that's what the devil does when you uh, have a sin when you keep trying to hide the sin and pretend it didn't happen and pretend you're innocent he's literally got something to hold over your head he may wait until um god has blessed you to a certain point and then suddenly drop this thing this information on everyone just to discredit you and to completely derail um your your destiny the, oh yeah he's, he definitely does that as long as you're trying to make any effort towards god and you're, you're sort of holding on to sin and trying to sort of not, maybe not confess or admit that you've done something wrong. Um, he's got you. He's definitely got you. So your enemy has nothing to hold like over your head when you confess your sin, right? Number two, confessing enables you to repent. Um, so confessing is saying, I did this, I did this, I did that. And obviously the next step is to then make the stand or the, the decision to completely repent and turn away from that thing. Um, and so as we know, I, it's not written anywhere, but I've found that repentance is a privilege that we as people have, that entities of darkness don't have. They've been cast out of heaven for good. We get to repent they don't and that's why a lot of the time the enemy will try and keep people away from the truth and he'll blind people and and lie to people if he does tell them the truth he tells them the twisted truth he doesn't want anyone finding out the truth the bible says through knowledge shall the just be delivered right and god also says um my people perish for lack of knowledge right and the, so when people if people could just understand the privilege of repentance and what just what it does for you you know more and more people would be repenting readily and freely without anyone prompting them to but people don't really understand the impact i even remember a man of god once teaching that the day you give your life to christ you don't have to repent that's it your sins are forgiven there's no more condemnation that is a, uh, a you know, th th that is that is not accurate. Uh, it, by, by no means am I disrespecting this man of God. Um, he is a powerful man of God. I do believe, however, that even as, as men and women of God, people um, have certain levels of revelation and understanding at different points in their time. I just happened to hear this particular message. He may have taught it years and years ago and has probably uh, come, you know, advanced in, in sort of in wisdom and understanding since. But I had to say, I had to admit to myself on that one, 
point that wasn't accurate. You have to be repenting all the time. The number of times you're thinking negative, the number of times you are resentful of people, the number of times you may even be harboring unforgiveness without even realizing. You have to bring yourself um, to the habit of repentance and basically tease out all those sins that are trying to hide within you. Because remember, those sins are they represent spirits that are trying to trying to occupy you as their home when you repent you let them go and you just say nope this is wrong i shouldn't have done it father and i turn away from this so it's it's like it's a chance to renounce those evil spirits basically number three confessing um is a way of reviewing your performance right so if we sort of um explain this in sort of in terms of the world and yes i know we shouldn't be conformed to the world uh, but when you if you want to sort of gain maybe a, a perspective or understanding of what confessing does for you um even at work there there is performance management right there you are you 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 review your performance in whatever capacity you work every so often it could be once a year it could be twice a year it could be three times a year, it could be every quarter or every month even right so you review you take stock and you sort of look at what you've done well in that period of time and what you haven't done so well and and it's important to do that as a christian in your work with god because then you're constantly and i'm not saying that god uh, rewards us based on our performance no but you are aware of w- what your shortfalls are um, it is easy to walk, particularly, uh, you know, the sin of unforgiveness can hide um, in us for, for decades and we wouldn't even know that we haven't forgiven certain people. Uh, and so it's one of those things that you have to be careful and you have to be constantly checking and renouncing out of your life because unforgiveness will, will sit in there and hide and you won't prosper and you wonder why you're not prospering when God has given you everything you might start to feel that maybe God doesn't love you and that's exactly where the enemy wants you he wants you in a place where you start to doubt God but when you're constantly confessing your sin things come up in your the Holy Spirit convicts you and he causes you to deal with certain issues he deals with you regarding certain issues and once those sins and like the scripture says he that um, concealeth a sin cannot prosper you can't prosper as long as there's hidden sin in you you can't prosper and God wants nothing but prosperity for you. And and a, a lot of the time, the reason you're not, you've done everything else, you're fasting, you are you are doing everything, you're even giving to the poor, you're doing all sorts. Then you're thinking, yeah, but God said, if I give to the poor, he will prosper me. Why am I not prospering? There's a hindrance somewhere. And so when you get in the habit of confessing your sin and repenting uh, for your sin, you, 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 these things come up and you deal with them and let them go. And then you move forward and you prosper. Okay. Uh, number four, confessing does not make you weak. I had a really good discussion with some young people. I have that privilege of working with young people. And we were actually talking about this discussion. We we're talking about taking responsibility. Um, and the, the, you know, and I, we, there was a question that said, what would cause people not to want to take responsibility? And one of them said, um, it's because if you, if you admit that you've done something wrong, it makes you look weak, which I thought was a really good point to bring up. It's a misconception that we have as people, but it's a really, really good point. And I was glad they mentioned that because then it gave us a chance to talk about it. Um, confessing does not make you weak. Um, that's a perception we have as human beings. And I'm very sure it came from the pits of hell. Um, <clears throat> you know, that little evil spirit convincing you that, oh my gosh, are you really going to admit you were wrong? How do you think that makes you look? That makes you look like you don't know what you're doing. No, when you admit you, you know, when you confess what you've done wrong, that's actually strength. That's a sign of strength. Uh, you are taking responsibility. It actually makes you more trustworthy. Because then people know that you're not running around trying to uh, cover up on things you're not doing right in the workplace, for example. You're ready to admit that, no, I got that wrong. I misunderstood that. I made a mistake and I'd like to uh, take the steps to correct that uh, mistake. Okay, uh, number five, confessing to fellow men is, uh, sorry, confessing to fellow men is important regardless of their reaction. You do it for you. Um this is basically, again, sort of synonymous with, with repenting or apologizing to people when you've done wrong. Again, that's you taking responsibility. Um, it, it doesn't matter how they react. Again, this was brought up by another student who said, we, sometimes you don't want to say sorry to people because you don't know how they'll react. They might, they might reject your, 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 your uh, confession or your apology. No, it doesn't matter. You do it for you. You apologize. You do the right thing for you. When you do the right thing, you make progress. He that concealeth a sin cannot prosper. 
um okay now we're going on to one two three four five number six confession to god is a chance to talk to god and, and come remember god says come let us reason together when you confess to god you just come out and speak what's in your heart it's liberating guys it sets you free it's a cleansing it's cleansing time for you um you can't go wrong by confessing to god to god god wants to sit down and have that conversation that heart-to-heart conversation with you he wants you to talk to him and explain why you feel the way you do right so you have nothing to lose by talking to god nothing whatsoever if anything you are drawing nearer to him the bible says draw nearer to god and he will draw nearer to you right you're drawing nearer to him and that that you get this sense of of peacefulness within you when you talk to god and it's like you're confiding in him uh you confess things you never ever confess to other people when you can confess to god that means you're submitting to him and you recognize that he loves you and is merciful and he'll hear you out and correct you and convict you by his spirit and show you in your heart we probably even show you what to do to rectify the scenario again there's no you can't go wrong by talking to god and then finally number seven confession is admit is admitting that you have indulged in the devil's territory you're admitting that father you know i've been the, this what i did is not of god it's not of the spirit of god it's of the kingdom of darkness you don't want to have anything to do with the kingdom of darkness and so when you recognize that you've been dancing on the territory of the kingdom of darkness you can correct that You become aware of it. You become conscious of the fact that, oh, hang on, I shouldn't be doing that. This is not of God. God would never approve of this, right? And when you're aware of a problem, that gives you a chance to do something about it. As long as you keep being in denial about uh, what you do or don't do, you'll never be able to move forward because you'll never have the chance to correct uh, what needs to be corrected and to, you know, give God the chance to deal with whatever needs to be dealt with in you. This is how, look, think about the children of Israel who kept going round and round in circles for 40 years in the wilderness on a journey that could have been done in what, 10 days or so. Uh, that's the very thing. So you'll, you'll, you find that you'll keep repeating the same patterns in your life. You'll, you'll keep having the same struggles for a very long time because clearly you are not being honest. You're you're being in denial about things you're not doing right and there's just no progress as long as you're doing things that way you'll make no progress thank you for listening god bless you have a lovely day goodbye